So, on to multiplying binomials together. Might seem fairly innocuous. That's a harmless looking little binomial to a power of three, it's only got four terms. Then it's a harmless little binomial, power of four, it's only got the five terms. Very small numbers, one, two, three, four. That's all that appears there. Individually, yes, they're quite trivial. That first one, power three, one, three, three, one. That term being one has no effect on the coefficients, so it's just decreasing powers of x. So it'll be x to the power of three, three times x squared, three times x and one. Easy. That one, power four, that'll be one, four, six, four, one. That one will have no effect on the coefficients. 2x, decreasing powers of 2x. I'll put it all down though. So that's going to be 2x to the 4. Go up to 4 times. Now it'll be 2x to the 3. Not both of them put in the 1s because they'll not make any difference. 6 times 2x squared. Back to 4 times 2x. And finally just 1 times, or if you like, 2x to the 0. And that 0 should have been outside the bracket. 2x all to the power 0. Right, quickly then, so that's x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, then that'll be 16, that'll be 4x or 32, that'll be 6 4s or 24, 4 2s or 8x, and finally just the 1. But now, that had 4 terms, that had 5 terms, that means there's now 20 products to set out, and there's no way you're going to be able to fit these 20 in a line. So this line's going to have to be folded. And if you're going to have to fold the line, why not fold it to your own convenience? which would be this then, which would be start off with this term, given the highest power, and then keep them in columns. So start off with this multiplication. So that's just x cubed times each of them. That'll be nice and easy. So I'll be up to power 7, up to power 6, up to power 5, up to power 4, and that's x to 3. Keep on going plus, plus, plus. There's no point. When it comes to the next one, 3x squared times this, that's going to be x to the 6. Why not just start under here? Instead of folding it, like rattling through a typewriter, fold it to your own convenience. Keep them powers and columns. So that, this one, 48x to the 6. So it'll be 48x to the 6, that's 332 are 96, then it'll be 72x to the 4, 24x cubed, and then it'll be 3x squared. Right, fold it over. Now let's find same numbers times 3. So it'll be 48 and then the 96 again, and then it'll be the 72 again for the x to the 3, the, 7, the 24 again for the x squared, and then the 3 just for x. And then the last line will just be the same coefficient, so it's just going to be the 16, 32, 24x squared, plus 8x, plus 1. Then, adding them up. Well, it's easy now, they're in columns. So that's 16x to the 7 plus 80x to the 6 plus 168x to the 5 plus 192x to the 4 plus for x to the 3 I've got 129. Oh, look, digit swapping there. Plus for x squared, that's 51. 11x plus 1. Well, that's that. But usually you're not interested in getting the whole lot. You're only interested in homing in on a particular part of it or maybe the largest terms, <coughs> if x is a big number, because they'd be the most significant one, or the smallest terms, if x was a very small number, because they'd be the most significant ones there. So for this one, for instance, if I wanted to find the x squared terms, if I was just interested in what's the x squared term in that expansion, I wouldn't write it all out. You could write it out, I suppose, as far as this, but certainly with this power, and then just think, what makes x squared? Well, a 1 in this times an x squared in that, or an x in this times an x in that, or an x squared in this and the x in that. So if you had them written out, you could just go through those three products. Those two, those two, those two, and add the three together. If you'd taken the time to write that all out. If you didn't take the time to write that all out, and you were just starting from here again, if I was just starting from there, and I just said, what's the term in x squared? Well, I could identify it just by using the general form of the quadratics. Term in x squared. Well, who could, that, who could derive at that? You could have the x to the 0 from this one times the x to the 2 in that. The x to the 1 in the first one 
times x to the 1 in that, or the x squared in the first one times x to the 0 in that. Putting them all out, it would be this one. The general term in this would be the binomial coefficient, the combination, times the x, times the 1, the general term in that, the binomial coefficient, times the 2x, times the 1. Now in this one it's maybe debatable about whether this is going to be any faster than writing this part out and then picking out those three pairings because the numbers are so small. But I'll just continue with it anyway. Plus, and it'll be the same again for these two, so the pattern will look like this still, multiplying the particular terms just by identifying the particular terms rather than writing all out and picking them out. And this becomes more useful the nastier the terms get, the more awkward the expressions are and the higher the powers out are. I certainly wouldn't be writing them out. I'd probably just zoom in on the particular terms I want. This is going to have to start to reduce as I get towards the end. And then it would be this. Right, so the first one's going to be threes. I can put all that in. The second one's going to be power fours for the combinations. Right, for the first one I want x to the zero from this one, x to the two from this one. So I want x to the zero, and here I want x to the two. So if that's a zero and that's a three, that means that must be a three, so it's a three underneath. If that's a two, it must add up to four, that's a two, and if that's a two, that's a two. Next one I want the one from this, the power x in this, and the one with x in that. So I want that to be one, and that to be one. Well, if that's 1 and it adds up to 3, that must be 2, so that's 2. If that's 1 and it adds up to 4, that must be 3, so that's 3. And finally, I want the squared from the first one and the power 0 from the second one. Well, if that's a 3 and that's a 2, that must be a 1, so that's a 1. If that's 0, that must be a 4, so that must be a 4. So with writing, out writing all that out, I could home in in this term by working out these three parts. They still look quite nasty. But in this case, they're actually very simple little numbers. Now, I know they're all going to come to x squared. So I could just put this down and then just write x squared at the end of it. And now ignore the x part and just concentrate on the numbers. Which you know, anyway, they're quite easy. So 3c3, that's 3, that's going to be 1. 4c2 is 6, 2 to the 2 is 4, 1 to the 1 is 1. 3c2, that'll be 3, that's a 1, that's a 1. And 4c3 will be 4, 2 to the 1, that's 2, and then a 1. 3c1, that's 3, that'll just be a 1, there's another one. 4c4 is another one, there's another one, and there's a 1 at the end as well. Right, where's a big space? Right, adding up, that's 24, and 3 eighths are another 24, and that's just going to be 3, lots of x squared. So that's going to be 48, 51 x squared. The same as you had before. If that's the only term I was interested in, then this would be a way of finding it. But because these numbers are so small, you may, may well have just written them out as far as, for instance, x squared in them both and picked out the particular terms. So I'll do another one where there'd be no point in doing that because I'll put much nastier numbers into it. So, for this one, I don't want the whole expansion, I just want one particular term out of them all. I don't want to write out all seven of these and all ten of those get those 70 products or even just home in by writing out so many of them or just identify the terms. So which ones do I need? If I want x to the power 3, well that would be formed by x to the 0 from the first, x to the 3 from the second, theoretically, x to the 1 from the first, x to the 2 from the second, x to the 2 from the first, x to the 1 from the second, and x to the 3 from the first, x to the 0 from the second. Those would be the different combinations that would give me products, that would give me x to the 3. But this bracket's only going to give me even powers of x. So I'll never get an x cubed from this one or an x to the 1 from this one. So that narrows it down then. So the only two I've got to do are these two. Right, putting these down then. So I want to put in the general terms for these two binomials. So there'll be the coefficient first of all which will be 6c something, and then the two terms are 3x and 2. Second one is going to be 9c something, and it'll be 2x squared and a negative 5 for the second part. Right, I want the first one to be power 1, so I'm going to put 1 there. Next one to be x squared, it's x squared already, so I'm going to that power 1. Right, 
If that's a 1 and that's a 6, that's a 5, so it makes that 5. If that's a 1 and that's a 9, that's an 8. If that's an 8, that's an 8. Then, same again for the next one. So just replicate that same pattern of the same two terms. Right, and there it is. Then, I want to have first one to be a 3 and the second one to be a 0. Now, that one starts 6, and that one starts 9. So if that's a 3, that'll be a 3. And if that's a 3, that's a 3. If that's a 0, that's a 9. And if that's a 9, that's a 9. Now, you could just multiply that out by entering it all into your calculator, just ignoring the x terms. But just for the sake of the exercise, I'll put down what all the parts come to. So, this combination here, what have we got? We've got 6c5, that's the same as 6c1, so I'll be 6. The number of ways of choosing 5 of them is the same as not choosing 1 of them. That'll be 3. 2 to the 5, that'll be 32. 9c8, same as 9c1, that'll be 9. 2 to the 1, that's 2, and that's a bit nasty, I'll just leave that as negative 5 to the power 8. Plus, now I've left out the powers of x, I'll put that in at the end. Right, now, for this part here, 6c3, oh, well, I'll just have to spell that out. 6 times 5 times 4 over 3 times 2 times 1. 3 to the 3, that'll be 27, that'll be 8. 9, 9, well, that's easy, that's just 1. 2 to the nth into 0 is 1, and then another nasty negative 5 to the power 9, and that was all x cubed. Right, so putting all this into the calculator, lots of button pressing to get the answer to the first part, a lot of button pressing to get this which should be a negative answer because it's an odd power of negative 5. Then the final answer, negative 43875 followed by 5 zeros. And there it is. The answer. You could have gone straight from that line to that line. You could have had other things. Maybe I could have taken out a common factor of negative 5 to the power 8. But if I'm just pressing the buttons, it won't make any difference time-wise. But of course, that's x cubed. Of course, those were still the calculations for x cubed. And final one, a different type this time. This time I've put the x's to the end of the brackets because this is the way it would usually be written if x was a small number, if x was a proper fraction, if the value of x, the absolute value, was less than 1. And the smaller the x is, then the less significant the higher powers are. So that in a case like this, you might only be interested in the terms up to x squared because the rest of them would be so small they'd no longer be significant. The, the truer that would be, the smaller that x is. So, expand as far as x squared. The reasoning there being that the terms in x cubed and so on wouldn't be significant. If x was very small, for instance, like a hundredth, then by the time you've got to x cubed, you're dealing with millionths which would be pretty small. So, as far as x squared, well, I would just write them all out. But not all the way up. I'd only write them out as far as x squared in the two brackets. So for the first bracket, that's 4. So it's going to go 1, 4, 6, 4, etc. Right, so it'll be 1. The 1 won't matter, I'll just put 1. That'll be 2x to the power 0. 4 times, it's still just a 1. That'll be 2x to the power 1. 6, that'll still just be a 1. So it'll be 2x squared. And the rest don't matter because I only want to go as far as x squared, so I'll stop there. Next bracket, so I've got power 5, it's got 1, 5, 10, 5, etc. So it'll be 1 times, now that's 2 to the 5, x to the 0, 5 times, 2 to the 4, x to the 1, and then 10 times, 2 to the 3, x squared, and the rest don't matter, because I only want to go as far as x squared. So what I've got here, that's going to just be 1, that'll be 4 2, so 8x, and that's going to be 6 4, so 24x squared, and the rest don't matter, and that's going to be 32 plus... 5 16s are going to be 80x plus 10 8s are 80x squared, and again, the rest don't matter. Right, now just multiply them out. But I don't need to do all three of these to all three of, times all three of those. No, I only need to multiply them out again as far as x squared. So any product that goes gives me more than x squared, forget it. One will have to multiply them all, that's easy. So that's going to be 32 and 80x and 80x squared. That's so far so good. So 8x only needs to go as far as this term because that'll give you x cubed. So it'll be 832s are 256x and 8640x squared. Plus, I didn't need to do that last one. Now, x squared only needs to multiply the number. So it'll be 2432s, 768x squared. So adding all up, that'll be 32. Now it's at 6336x. Put this all. Put those x squares into a calculator, that's going to be 1488x squared. So that would be the expansion accurate enough when x is a small number. But if x was really small, then a good first approximation would just be the first two terms here, which would give a very good answer 
for tiny x's. Medical example then. Find the value of this quickly without using a calculator to three significant figures. Obviously you could just type them in and get the exact answer. No, if you can consider them as binomials, then you could do the calculation quite easily. You could write it down as 1 plus 0 0.004 to the power 7 times 1 plus 0 0.003 to the power 11. And since those parts are so small, the powers of them will disappear rapidly. So you'll need to go as far as the x term in the product of those two parts of it, considering those as being the x's. Because when you go to the x squared terms, you're going to have four, you're going to have seven decimal places here. Seven decimal places, okay, they'll use up the last two or three of them maybe, but they'll still be well out of range of the first three significant figures. So, what have we got for this then? I know that power seven is going to start one, because there's only one way of choosing none of them, then go to seven, because there's only seven ways of choosing one of them. So that would be one plus seven times 0 0.004 plus the rest. This one, power 11, the coefficients would start one, because there's only one way of choosing none of them, plus 11, because there's 11 ways of choosing one of them, plus 11 times 0 0.0003, and then the rest of them, which won't matter because the rest of them are going to give me higher powers of these multiplications. So what's that then? 1 plus 7 times that will just be 0.028 plus the rest. 1 plus, and that will just be 0 0.0033 plus the rest, which won't matter. I'm not doing this multiplication though. I'm not going to do one point that. No, because I know that all, I don't need this product here, the square of those two, the effective square of these two numbers. I just need to do, the one times the one is one, the one times that is 0 0.0033, that times the one is 0 0.028, or I could have done them the other way around, and I don't need that product, because I can see already it's going to go to seven decimal places, and they'll occupy the last three of them. So I'm going to have four empty decimal places, so that won't do a lot. It could affect this one here, but I only want the first three significant figures. So all I've got to do is add that up. So I've got one point, and then for this one it's going to have a three at the end. That's going to make an 11, that's going to make a three, that's going to make a zero. So if I wanted to three significant figures, it would just be 1.03. could possibly go to that one as well, 1.031, because I know these may affect this one. Just to check in that, multiplying it out, have it multiplied out here, it comes to, the actual answer is 1.03173686. So this figure here was affected by the ones that came afterwards. But as far as the first three are concerned, that's perfectly correct.